Let's take a look at some funny football undershirt messages. From mocking opponents for not making it to the Champions League to peeing on an opponent's jersey, these messages bring humour to the game. Back in 2006, Swansea City faced off against Carlisle United in the Football League Trophy Finals. And let me tell you, they didn't just win, they absolutely dominated. But that's not even the best part. Lee Trundle, aka The Showboat, decided to add a little extra spice to the celebration. He whipped off his shirt to reveal a cheeky t-shirt with a guy taking a leak all over a Cardiff City shirt. Talk about taking the rivalry to the next level. Well, needless to say, the authorities didn't take too kindly to Lee's little stunt. They arrested him on the spot, but thankfully they saw the funny side of it and let him off the hook shortly after. Listen up folks, because I've got another classic football story to tell you. So picture this, it's the year 2000 and Arsenal are facing off against Liverpool. It's been almost three whole years since any Arsenal player has managed to score against the Reds. That's right, three years. But then, in the dying moments of the game, who comes charging in like a boss? None other than the legendary Thierry Henry, that's who, and boy, did he make an entrance. After scoring a goal that broke the long-standing dry spell, Henri whipped off his shirt to reveal a message that read, Bang goes the nil-nil draw. Can you imagine? That's like spitting in the face of a team that you've been struggling against for years. But you know what? Henri had every right to celebrate. After all, he just made Arsenal history by scoring the goal that finally brought down Liverpool. And the fact that he did it in the nick of time just makes it all the sweeter. Elsewhere, another former Premier League striker tried to show everyone that he was the real boss. So it's the 2012 Premier League campaign and Berbatov's playing against Southampton. Now, Berbatov is known for his smooth moves and killer instincts on the pitch, but he's also got a wicked sense of humour and he showed it off that day when he scored a goal and lifted up his shirt to reveal a message that said, keep calm and pass me the ball. Well, can you imagine how his teammates must have felt when they saw that message? They probably thought, mm, Dibata, we've been trying to pass you the ball this whole time, but despite their efforts, the game ended in a 1-1 draw. But here's the real kicker. Even though Berbatov's teammates kept passing him the ball, he still ended up scoring 15 goals that season. That's right, 15 goals! More than Sergio Aguero and Wayne Rooney at the time. I mean, talk about making a statement. Another gooner on this list is Ian Wright. Back in September 97, Arsenal was facing off against Bolton, and Ian Wright, Arsenal's top goalscorer, was about to break a record that had stood for years. Cliff Bastin's record of 178 goals had been the benchmark for Arsenal for ages, but Wright was determined to beat it. And when he finally scored that historic goal, he lifted up his shirt to reveal a message that said, 179, just done it, with a big Nike swoosh underneath it. Talk about style. But here's where things get interesting, you see? Wright showed off that message even though he'd only just hit 178 goals. The newspapers were already getting ready to print headlines mocking him for jumping the gun. Thankfully, Wrighty had the last laugh. He went on to score two more goals in that game, ending with a hat-trick and a resounding 4-1 win for Arsenal. Talk about Ian Wright channeling his inner Snoop Dogg with his black meme glasses on. Well, 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 why always me? We've got another interesting one for you. Remember when Balotelli beat United and showed that famous message? Before that infamous night when he revealed the Why Always Me shirt, Balotelli was already causing a stir in the press. See, he had a little mishap at home where he lit fireworks in his bathroom that ended up costing him a whopping 400,000 euros. Oops, and that just made him an even bigger target for the British media. But then came the match that would change everything. Man City was facing off against Manchester United and Balotelli was on fire. He calmly scored the opening goal and then, in true Balotelli fashion, he lifted up his shirt to reveal that unforgettable message, Why Always Me? Next on the list is James Beatty, who was playing for Southampton and was one of their best players at the time. Beatty may have thought he was the obvious choice for England's attacking department, but unfortunately, his stint with the national team didn't quite live up to his expectations. When he scored that goal against Middlesbrough and revealed the obvious message on his shirt, it was like he was daring England's then-manager Sven Joran Eriksson to ignore him. But Eriksson called him up and Beatty had the chance to prove his worth on the international stage. Alas, Beatty didn't quite deliver on his promise. He only earned five appearances for England and failed to score a single goal. It must have been a frustrating experience for a player who had so much talent and potential. Speaking of talent, you know Marco Materazzi, the guy from Inter Milan who won the treble in 2010. 
Well, when he came on as a sub in the Champions League final against Bayern Munich, he had a little surprise up his sleeve. After the game, he whipped off his shirt to reveal a message that said, Do you want this too? With a picture of him holding the Champions League Cup. It was like he was saying, Hey Juventus, you want some of this? I mean, the guy had serious guts. But let's not forget that other famous moment in his career when he got headbutted by Zinedine Zidane in the 2006 World Cup final. I bet that left a headache. Anyway, Matarazzi was a total beast on the field and a key part of Inter Milan's success, and that shirt message was just the icing on the cake. I mean, who doesn't love a bit of trash talk? Let's just move on to something which was politically charged. Oh man, do you remember that time when Robbie Fowler wore that legendary t-shirt during the European Cup Winners' Cup in 97? He was showing support for the 500 dockers who lost their jobs and he made sure the whole world knew about it. It was a pretty ballsy move, but it made him a true cult hero at Liverpool. After that, his name and Liverpool were like two peas in a pod. They were forever linked. But nothing can beat this last one. See, Aston Villa and Birmingham City have always been fierce rivals, so Paul Tate, the Birmingham lad, decided to spice up the rivalry with a cheeky message. After scoring in the Auto Windscreen Shield final in 1995 against Carlisle United, he'd revealed a t-shirt that read, Birmingham City shit on the villa, with a pretty graphic image to go with it. The message landed him a fine, but I bet he couldn't care less. Let's just say he had his priorities straight. While you're at it, please like the video if it's informative. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any videos we post.